Hello and welcome to this live on um, language learning. And uh, I actually wanted to start today just by talking about something that I think is important and um, something that I've had a week of experience with uh, just recently. And that is what happens when you're empty, what happens when you, you really don't have anything else to give. Um, so language learning, where does that fit in with things that uh, really become more important than than just talking about language. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit about why I'm talking about this today. So it's nice to see you all. And um, the first thing is, is that this last week has been a very difficult week. And, and basically, uh, because of that, and this happens to all of us, there are just weeks where you have too much work going on or things happen that are outside of your control, things that influence how you feel or um, how you're able to be productive or what you can do. And they can take many forms from illness, sickness to something bad happening or um, just simply too much work or you just feel down or whatever it is. You can you can have all these reasons why you just don't study. And um, I've had a week like this where um, things out of my control happened. And it just unfortunately was it meant that I wasn't studying um, as before. And I'm just going to explain a little bit about that, how this happens to all of us and not just um, to, you know, to, 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 to you, if you think that, you know, that maybe this is something that only you ex you, you experience. Um, I'm just trying to log on to the, there we go. So, so this week, yeah, I, as I say, I wasn't able to, to study and I decided actually that I was going to entire week for study because there was no way I was productive um there was just no way i could concentrate or focus on what i had to do and and i had to admit to myself that uh this week uh that's just gone was going to be a week pretty much without study at all and actually pretty much without doing a lot of very much at all to be honest so um i i had to prioritize and this is something that i think uh when we, we study languages, we, we often think that uh, we see people, and maybe some of you see me in this way, and maybe you see other people who study languages and are quite, you know, out on public, in, you know, in the public, so yeah, talking about language learning and that we, you know, we're flying, learning all these languages and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it was, it was just, uh, it's just unfortunately not always the case. Um, um actually i don't drink alcohol um <laughs> so if anybody doesn't know I, yeah i mean it's not something i sort of hide but i don't drink alcohol um but um <laughs> but yes today is uh, valentine's day for a lot of you and um actually the macedonian holiday of saint trifon which is the holiday of wine is is one that trumps uh, a lot of times here but go back to learning and language learning and just to sort of explain to you why i decided i want to talk about this it's because i get a lot of people asking me saying things like well how do you find the time and how do you do this and how do you do that and don't you, don't other things get in the way and sometimes reality does get in the way of learning and um, sometimes you have to prioritize things because something that's happening right now is more important than than learning another 10 words, 100 words or whatever in a new language. And sometimes uh, life is like that. And I think we focus a lot on um, learning languages and we focus a lot on, on you know, the best ways to do it. And we focus on all these things. But there are a lot of psychological things that go on as well. And when you take a break, like I've taken this week off uh, because, as I say, something a lot bigger happened that um, I had to deal with. And um, it, it, it just meant that um, I had to sort of make peace with myself that no it's okay for me to do this it's okay for me to 
to take the time I need to deal with things that are more important. And it doesn't mean I'm giving up on things because like everybody else, I, I, you know, the, I have the same crazy voice in my head telling me that I'm giving up or, you know, sometimes we're our own worst enemies or our own worst critics and we are the meanest we can be to ourselves. But the worst hater that we have is actually living in our heads. So I suppose that's also why when people <laughs> my own mind and, um, and, and it, it's sort of ignoring that and, and while well, talking to it, acknowledging it and saying yeah thanks for that <laughs> that's really not useful we need to be useful and productive and move forward so this is kind of how I deal with these kinds of things I sort of yeah I, I, I do my best to um, to take on board what's going on and then reformulate what I need to do so um, and that can mean just simply acknowledging that there's something that needs not to go into study the languages and I'm not going to um, do this project or that project or something else I'm just going to take the time I need to actually deal with the situation and this is something that I've I've, I've, I've found this week uh, has been a very hard week um, it's been it's been tough and uh, and so but I've had to do that and um, and actually I'm glad I have and I'm going to be writing about it in my update on um, on learning Korean because I've had a week off learning Korean basically um, um, my plans were to learn every you know study every day and all that kind of stuff and I've the only thing I have done is uh, the italki classes that I kept in, uh, or I had already booked. I, I only did those, and they were, um, and, and also some classes that I, I have that are sort of just weekly occurrences. I kept those just because I thought it was good for me to have some other external input, just for my own sanity to sort of to to. Yeah, to hear, hear voices and hear opinions and talk to people in my world, and and I found that really really good actually, and I'm glad I did it. I didn't feel particularly productive with uh, some of my learning. Um, there's some learning I definitely felt okay. It it has affected or will affect my ability to to, to learn this language quickly and um, and to and to improve. So I definitely feel like I've taken a step back this week in my Korean studies, and um, and I'm I'm okay with that. Um, I've accepted that, and I think that it's it's actually probably better for me to do that than to than to force myself and make myself not want to study or feel sick or anything else. It's better to not overload yourself. If you feel that you can't cope, it's better I think to acknowledge that you can't do everything and that we're not superhuman and that we um we try and sort of set our boundaries and um and this is sort of one of the things when i talk to people about um you know learning plans and i say it's important to plan it's important to think of what you can realistically do and i always say that has to go with regular consideration as to what's happening at the moment from moment to moment so it's, it's all well and good for me to say, well, I plan to do this, 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 and this, and I'll review in a month. But sometimes something happens like that, and everything changes, and the world changes a little bit um, forever uh, because something happens. And it's really important to, to give yourself time to allow yourself to to roll with that change and to and to adapt and to and yeah and to just take stock of what's really important and and these are the things that this normally share uh, with many people. Um, I guess I've, I've shared on the on the Facebook group sometimes, and but I haven't been on the Facebook group for this week either. And um, I, I would definitely, um, I would definitely say to you, if you have that kind of feeling where it gets too much, agree with yourself a time when you think you will get back. And I think that that's the most productive way of dealing with it. Um, it's always good to make sure that you're happy with your decision, and that you're happy with with what you agree with yourself that you're going to do in terms of goals, in terms of study plans, in terms of um, learning strategies and um, the thing that I now know that I'll do when I start back 
hopefully from tonight, I'm going to have another look at uh, Sun Link Arena again. And if, if I don't feel like it, I will do it tomorrow instead of tonight. Uh, but I'm hoping that tonight I will actually listen to um, one of the new podcast episodes on, on my Korean study. And I'm going to blog a little bit about that as well, about what this means to me and why um, why I think it's important to, to, do, to do what I'm explaining to you now, to acknowledge limitations and needs as a human. Um, so, so what I'll do is I will, I will start again and I will go through some of the, um, the verbs and the, um, the sentences and the grammar that I've been, and vocab that I've been learning, re-listen to some uh, elements and revise some of what I've done. I'll use that time to, to just start revising so that I don't feel that I've missed too much. It's amazing though when you, when you start revising a language, and I've been through this many, many times where I've studied a language for a period of time. Um, whether it's a language I've studied over a long period of time or whether I've just done a project of, say, a month or three months of studying one language. When I go back to the language, it's amazing how quickly you get back into it. And I've done that this year, or last year, actually. I'm thinking this year, but last year, with Indonesian. And it's, it's been amazing, really, how quickly I got back into saying things in Indonesian again. And it makes me think that I'd love to do that again with other languages that I could get by in and sort of express my ideas. And I'd love to be able to get back to that level again with some of those, like Finnish, like Latvian, uh, where definitely I, I'm, I'm not at that level anymore. Um, not that I was a very high level, but I was able to communicate um, quite a lot of uh, basic stuff in those languages. So, yeah, that's from me. That's kind of my update. And so when I say, you know, when you're empty, what do you do? You, you you look into yourself and see and make yourself a realistic process. You don't, I, I do my best not to listen to the, the hater in my head telling me, that uh, oh, that's it, you failed, or that's it, you may as well give up now, you're not going to do the language, that's it. There's, you've, uh, this, you haven't done, you've missed a day, or you've done, or buy tokens to make up the day. It's not the point of language learning. You, buying tokens is completely, buying tokens or missing a streak, missing a day, buying tokens to repair it is pointless, um, absolutely pointless, because <laughs> the language learning is not about that. Language learning is about having honest goals for yourself that you agree with yourself moving forward. The point of language learning is not getting a gold star or about, <laughs> about um, mending streaks with fake money that you haven't got. It's not the point of language learning. And, um, and this is why I'm very much a realist when it comes to it. And I think that it's really important to, to, to let you know and have a window into my world and, and see that actually, just like you, I actually have these times and periods in my life where it's just not possible for me to learn or to study. And I have to stop, take stock, set myself new goals and, and agree with myself when I feel I'm going to be able to do it and deliver. It's a bit like work. You can day to deliver the project or what you said you were going to do. And this is how it is with language learning. Um, so I hope, I hope sharing this is useful. I hope it sparked some questions. I'm going to have a look at the questions now and see um, what I have. Okay, so when, you, when I have italki lessons, do sometimes people recognize recognize me as like a celebrity um i've had a couple of teachers recognize me before um but it, it's not a big thing so it's 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 quite it's normally quite fine I'm, I'm so glad to see these people saying nice things um about this um, switch to french no, <laughs> that was a bit late sorry <laughs> désolé <laughs> après je peux parler français il n'y a pas de problème um uh, ancient learning grammar um in context is probably the best way, um, but uh, maybe studying uh, the, the the theory if you're interested in the theory of grammar and how it works, and then looking at things in context is really important. Thank you very much. You're all very kind for your nice comments. Um, I'm, I'm glad you found that useful. Thank you. Um, it's, it, it is something I think that Often, unfortunately, we sort of focus so much on language stuff. And when I was talking to Lena, and she does a lot with the psychology of, of sort of as well, the whole person. And I think it's super important to, to acknowledge that kind of honesty and real 
you know, we are people, we're human beings, we have feelings, things happen that we can't control. Sometimes things happen that we can control and we just lose control of, of what's going on. And that that happens and that's fine. And just because that happens, it doesn't mean we fail in it. doesn't mean that we can't get back into onto the saddle and, and, and carry on with our learning. It, it doesn't mean that at all. We can, uh, you know, take on all of these difficulties and and work and work together and move forward. And I think this is what the idea of community, why it's so so important and why reaching out and connecting with each other in this way is really important because it, it makes us realize that we're not on our own. And um, I hope by sharing this, this is the idea of uh, fake polyglots or people who who are just like, they're putting out so many languages and things that it's almost the opposite of inspiring. It can it can feel like, oh, this is impossible for me now to achieve. And it makes you feel, feel bad. And that's the last thing that I would want anyone to feel. So I, I hope that, um, that by sharing these kinds of things, the reality um, that, that you're going to, you know, you're going to get something from this as well and, and recognize that, absolutely none of you are alone we're all together in this and we're all we're all struggling at times to to make everything work and we're all sometimes struggling to to learn things or to get things properly in our heads right have i already joined clubhouse i have and my clubhouse app name is at richard simcott so if you want to join me on clubhouse i will i've not added it to everything yet but i will try my best to add it but yeah if you want to find me on clubhouse um in fact I'll, i'm planning on doing something on clubhouse um regularly because i think it's quite a good platform if you don't have clubhouse hopefully you can find someone with an invitation to let you join uh, it's very cool um me sentido cansada ani ajá esta esta semana y no quiero estudiar sí creo que es normal y muy importante darse el respiro y no tardar mucho en tornar uh, sí, es que depende realmente, depende realmente, Ani, de, de la situación, que a veces hay que tomar más que una semana, depende de lo que está pasando en tu vida, pero lo importante es saber que repasar tus apuntes es la cosa uh, clave, uh, para, es una cosa muy importante para hacer esto y luego volver a estudiar de nuevo y aprender más, es que es una cosa... Uh, es una cosa súper difícil reconocer um, algo que no sabemos o no podemos uh, hacer uh, durante un periodo de, de nuestra vida y, y creo que eso sí que es la, la cosa más importante. Pero sí, nadie es perfecto. Eso sí que es, es verdad. What Venetian resources are you using? I'm currently using... Uh, I don't study Venetian, me, but... Um, I, maybe that's aimed at somebody else. I'll just see. Um, hi, Richard. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. Over the years, I've learned so much. Thank you very much. Could you recommend some Albanian resources? I find it difficult to find them. Yeah, um, so um, it's in Albanian. Um, it's, uh, it's, I'll try and write it in, in, in it on YouTube. Discovering Albanian um, is the best book that I found. Albanian. Um, ¿Tienes alguna experiencia con el latino? Sí, uh, Olga, sí. He estudiado latino con Hippocrine. Hippocrine latino. Y que fun funciona bastante bien. Y me gusta. Um, fluent in... Okay, so fluent in celebration. And can be mastered in as well. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Zarko, I rec still recommend the book written in English. The book's written in... Um, in, Ser in Serbian, Croatian, Macedonian, etc., um, are not amazing. Um, there are a couple of university books that I have in Albanian for first year uh, university studies in Albanian here at the university. Um, I recommend that book actually. Still, it's it's probably the best book. Um, Salut Richard, j'ai une question concernant les langues de ta fille. Tu as élevé en cinq langues, mais tu demandais si elle avait euh, atteint un niveau natif dans chaque langue. Euh, ah, tu te demandes, d'accord. Euh, en fait, c'est difficile à dire parce que <rire> en fait, niveau d'un natif, en fait, ça dépend vraiment la langue maternelle, combien on sait parler, on sait vraiment maîtriser euh, notre langue. 
maternelle, disons. Euh, mais moi, je dirais que pour elle, vraiment, en ce qui concerne la compréhension des, de, de toutes les, les cinq, et, elle les comprend très bien. Et c'est automatique, en fait, dans, dans sa tête. Euh, en ce qui concerne euh, comment elle parle, les langues, moi, je dirais que l'accent, ça va très bien dans, dans toutes les, les, les cinq. Euh, elle fait ses études en anglais, euh, mais elle étudie aussi un, pas mal de... Oh, ben, elle, elle parle beaucoup de mastonien, bien sûr, parce qu'à la maison, on parle mastonien. Donc, euh, les deux langues, mastonien et anglais, en ce qui concerne le vocabulaire et tout ça, euh, c'est parfait. Euh, avec le français, c'est un peu moins, parce qu'elle n'habite pas en, en France. En fait, elle n'est jamais allée en France, mais donc, euh, elle n'a elle a pas vraiment... Elle, elle jouait... Quand elle était très jeune, elle jouait en français. Euh, euh, quand on était en, en, en moyenne section, grande section, euh, première année aussi, elle, euh, elle jouait en français. Mais, euh, mais maintenant, non, elle ne joue jamais. Mais elle parle sans problème. Euh, L'espagnol et l'allemand, elle se débrouille bien. Elle parle, elle comprend très bien. Euh, mais je ne dirais pas, par exemple, aussi. Euh, si on parle avec elle, on ne va pas penser qu'elle parle euh, chaque jour pendant toute la journée en allemand, en espagnol, c'est normal, parce qu'elle ne fait pas. Elle, elle fait une une heure euh, par jour avec moi, c'est tout. Mais, euh, mais elle, elle parle, oui. Elle essaie. Um, I also can find audiobooks in Albanian. Do you know it's possible to get Harry Potter or Tolkien in Albanian like an audiobook? I've never seen that, so I've never seen uh, the audiobook, audiobooks in, in Albanian. I don't think there's a huge market for them. Um, it's kind of similar to, to um, in Macedonian, I've never seen them either. Uh, in Bulgarian, you can get them, but in, yeah, in Albanian, I've seen them in Bulgarian on an application, but not in Macedonian. And I've Definitely not seen them in Albanian either, but I think that probably if you want practice with reading and stuff and and spoken Albanian, I would recommend some of the news in Albanian. They have videos and they have things written in Albanian, so you could use that kind of thing as well. Um, I'm no problem me. <laughs> no, um, I may have said something else. Let's see. Um, let me see if I can just answer questions on here too. Uh, could you share? Uh, okay, how you learned the Russian verbs of motion? <laughs> um, it's I still get them wrong. <laughs> is the is the short answer? So I still make mistakes with Russian. Uh, it's absolutely normal that I make mistakes with Russian. Um, the verbs of motion are actually quite different to in um, the more complicated than in in the, the South Slavic languages. Uh, so I don't get to even practice something similar. Um, we, we, we have some ideas of some similarities, but not like in Russian in the same way. I think Russian, Czech has the same kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still make mistakes with, with them. I, I don't really mind if I do. It's it's not the end of the world. I understand them and, they, and people understand me when I speak. Uh, but yeah. Um, a lot of grammatical exercises to get them still wrong <laughs> is the answer. Um, let me see. Um, do you still practice your Indonesian? Yes, I practiced it actually on Friday. I had a an hour of Indonesian on Friday and I just chat for an hour with my Indonesian teacher and she corrects me and we and then she goes through some really cool stuff. She's really she's really good actually. Um, but I've got to have a break unfortunately she's going to be writing a thesis. Uh, soon, so I'm going to have three months without my Indonesian teacher, and she's just the best. She's absolutely brilliant. Um, she's one of the best teachers I've ever had, actually. Um, okay, wow. Okay, I can see some people saying they can't understand what I'm saying. I hope you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> um, any tips on the declension of German nouns? Um, so I would say, honestly, with German nouns, I tended to learn what I needed to say in context and repeat it. And after lots of repetition, I learned the patterns um, automatically. That's how I did it. Um, yeah, so that's how I did it with German, German nouns. And I think in most languages with cases, it's the best way to do it as well. Um, okay. 
Hi Richard, if you if you had to move to another region other than the Balkans, uh, which one would you pick to live in? Wow, that's a good question, Louis. Um, I would I would live in so many different places. <laughs> there are so many places I love. Um, there are a number of countries actually I really like. In the Americas, I would choose um, either well. Well, actually, two, there are two countries that I love in the Americas. Um, there's Mexico and there's uh, Brazil. I really like those two countries. Um, in Asia, um, I have like a family connection to Thailand. I quite fancy um, spending more time in, in some of the other Asian countries. Uh, Indonesia as well is another country I absolutely love. And, um, I, would, I, would, I would go and stay in Indonesia for a, for a while in a heartbeat. Um, I also, in Europe, I love Malta, um, and I also, well, I like so much of Europe. I, I would love to spend time in Malta and really learn Maltese, um, and Iceland is probably one of my favourite places, so I love going back to Iceland, I never get sick of Iceland, and I would I would go there as well, but, um, but yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, daydreaming about travel now. Uh, yeah, not possible yet for me, unfortunately. Um, please help me with some advice. I have a minor in Portuguese and I've listened to thousands of hours of YouTube, but I still don't understand movies. Skyping with Brazilians is no problem. Mark, it takes so long to really feel at ease with understanding the language. Um, unfortunately, there is no there is no real secret to to this idea of you, all of a sudden you you know going from one to the other it's literally you have to just keep on listening and reading and getting lots of input uh, so that you go over through these perceived levels when you get i think when you've gone past through the grammar and you understand the grammar and you understand most things and you can express most things it's literally a case of you you go through more and more and more of this sort of lots of different types of different things and eventually <laughs> you understand pretty much everything there's an, unfortunately just no and if, if there is i've never heard of it there's no way of, of skipping it it's you're doing the right thing listening to hours and hours of, of content um maybe choose new content new topics that you don't listen to uh, depends what you're listening to aquarium um a mí también me gusta Ladino, ahora soy miembro de Ladino. Ah, Ladino Comunita. Ah, muy bien. Me gusta, me alegro mucho. Olga, qué bien. ¿Vas a tocar algo también en Ladino? Me gustaría saber si vas a aprender algo. Ah, no sé, yo te pido. Mi última pregunta es hoy. ¿Heb je ooit Afrikaans? Ja, dat heb ik wel. Uh, ik ben uh, naar Zuid-Afrika uh, gegaan. En daarvoor heb ik ook. Uh, ja, Hoe lang was het? Het was ja, één maand of zo, zoiets, of drie maanden, een stuk of één of drie maanden of zo, heb ik uh, Afrikaans geleerd om naar uh, ja, Zuid-Afrika te gaan. En ik ben ja, zes weken daar geweest. Ik heb heel, heel weinig Afrikaans eigenlijk gesproken, want ja, uh, dat was een kapstad en dan ja, helemaal Engels, moet ik zeggen. En dan heb ik uh, meestal dan um, also, uh, uh, op straat uh, gehoord en uh, heel, heel weinig um, uh, Afrikaans moet ik zeggen. Maar, um, maar ja, ik heb de taal wel goed geleerd om, om alles te verstaan wat, 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 wordt geschreven, wat, wat wordt geschreven daar op straat of uh, in museum of zoiets. En uh, dat was mooi, maar helaas, in de kaas, <laughs> niet zo, uh, niet zo uh, gesproken. Mohammed, you're learning BCS, Bosnian Croatian Serbian. B1 level, I want to reach B, C, C1 level. Any tips? Wow. Um, so, tips for learning those languages. I would say if you're at B1 level, then you should really be listening to some news. Um, so, uh, you can go straight to the news that's, 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 that's there or, you know, about the countries. I think sometimes news from the region can be more complicated because... If it's about things that you don't really know, there are lots of names and lots of things that you don't understand that are not to do with the language, but more to do with the culture. Now, we, we have uh, TV from Serbia 
uh, Croatia sure and Bosnia here at home. And, and so I, for me, I listen to it all the time and I'm used to the names and I'm used to um, the situation in the different places and the, where the different parts of the countries are. Um, but I would probably go back to the advice that I gave before about Voice of America or SBS Radio uh, in Australia. They're both good sources of, of language that they, where they talk about international things primarily. And I think things that you'll be able to find things in another language to compare and contrast. I would say that would be my, yeah, my best advice really to start getting into news that way, where you're not having to to listen to things. Otherwise, actually, Al Jazeera also has um, has news in 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 our language. So yeah, you can look at Al Jazeera too, another way place with. I don't know how. But yeah, that, that would be the, the best way. And then listening to lots and lots of it until you get to the point where you feel very, very confident. Um, let me see more questions. Uh, if you to me, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Road to Polly got seriously. <laughs> I make mistakes in every language. It's absolutely normal. Um Galver, aqui Sou muito fado. Oh, obrigado. <risos> obrigado. Ah, com certeza. Ah, li, 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 li. Não, é, é isso. Oh, a conversação <risos> em português. Ah, eu gosto disso. Um, Afrikaans sounds cool. Yeah, it is. Afrikaans is pretty cool, actually. Um, I enjoyed learning it. I mean, it's, it's funny when you learn a language and then you don't really use it. You, it was kind of much more of a case of just understanding how it's different to other languages to speak. Weirdly, there's an Afrikaans speaking family here uh, that I know and um, I've, I've listened to Afrikaans also with them and one of the, my children always used to speak to me in Afrikaans. Um, obviously this year I haven't really had much contact because of obvious reasons and uh, but yeah hopefully in the future that will start again. Why can children learn an accent but we can't? Um, money, I'm not sure that's always true. It depends how old the child is. Um, so some children do. I'll give you an example, I have a friend at university um, who was 11 when she moved from South Africa to the UK and her sister was 13. Um, my friend had a very strong Afrikaans accent in English. Uh, she wasn't aware of it, which I found really strange, but that no one really said much to her about it. But she had a very strong Afrikaans accent when she spoke English, whereas her sister, at two years older, uh, when I was expecting her to speak in the same way, and she didn't. She had, um, she had a, a just a local accent, which really surprised me. So it depends on the child, depends on the person, it depends on the age. I've met. I've met people who get close to a kind of a native sound accent in, in, in various languages. Um, I think that you're always, as an adult, you're always going to give yourself away at some point because um, you didn't grow up in the country or uh, and so you're missing some of the, the cultural stuff, some of the things that were on TV at the time. You should have understood about them. For me, for example, here, um, if I were to speak with people here in, in Macedonian. Okay, I have a big problem in that. Um, here, my generation would speak fluent, completely perfect, um, Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian, uh, what was then Serbo-Croat, okay, during Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia. They would speak that perfectly as well as Macedonian. Uh, well, perfectly, they'd speak, it, they'd speak it to a native kind of level, but they would, they would possibly make mistakes and have an accent, okay? Um, now, when I when I first arrived uh, in Skopje, I, I realized very quickly to be able to fit into my generation, I needed to know not just Macedonian but also um, Bos uh, well Bosnian, Serbian, Croatian. Um, I'm not mentioning Montenegrin because someone mentioned this. Why did you not mention Montenegrin? I've never been there and I've never really met many Montenegrins. <laughs> and and um, but and the but I do have experience with the other three and if i'm honest to this day uh even after sort of speaking this like these languages for like 17 years 
when I go to like parties or when I go to a wedding or when I go to when I'm listening to the, when I'm out with friends or you know, listening to TV or whatever else, they all know all of these old Yugoslavian songs, uh, and and I know some of them, um, but they kind of they all start singing along and they went, well, why don't you sing along? And like, I haven't learned thousands of, of old Yugoslav songs. I don't know them all. I know I know some of them and I know a lot of the, the uh, you know bits of them, but um, it would be absolutely impossible. Uh, for me to, to, I'd have to dedicate hours and hours of my life just to learning lots and lots of these songs. Same comes as well with, um, yeah, with with things like, for example, if I wanted to learn, you know, about all the old TV programs or old films, and there are always references in the language to to so many things that it would be impossible uh, to, unless you like spent your entire life just on that one language it would be pretty difficult to to sort of to 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 speak like exactly like a native as an adult because you just, yeah, it's just very difficult it also becomes less relevant as well i mean there are certain languages where it's not as big a problem because um like english for example um, it's not as big a problem because you're speaking to people from lots of different countries who speak English. And so if I speak to somebody from the United States of America or from Canada or from Australia, New Zealand, or from somewhere else that speaks English as a native language, as an official language of the country, our experience is going to be different anyway. So is it as relevant? Whereas if you come to this part of the world in the Balkans, Everybody who learns these languages uh, from from home to you know, school, and whatever, they always uh, know these things because, yeah, it's just part of the culture, and so you kind of can't escape it. Uh, tu me recommandais un site internet pour apprendre l'allemand. Uh, C'est difficile un site. Uh, oh, je dirais en fait um, Deutsche Welle. Euh, et, et assez cool pour ça, pour apprendre l'allemand. Il y a pas mal de choses, si, si tu utilises ça. Euh, tu peux laisser Deutsche Welle, euh, c'est DW, D, 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 w, en fait. DW, il y a, en fait, il y a une partie de, du site web où on peut euh, choisir aussi l'apprentissage de l'allemand et puis euh, trouver beaucoup de choses euh, sur, sur l'allemand. Ça va t'aider un peu. Avec l'apprentissage d'un autre élément. Um, does it take you long to decide on which language to learn next, or is it more impulsive? It. I've got a long list of languages I'd like to learn still. It, it just it never ends. Um, but they all now. Now I tend to do projects more than like saying I'm going to learn an entire language. I. I I realistically don't have time to to get to these crazy levels in in every single language. You now it's. It's not necessary, it's not important, and um, the enjoyment I get is actually to be able to communicate my ideas uh, in a new language nowadays. Um, I've already taken the languages that I use for work and for my life to a very high level, and I don't really need to do that with every single language. In fact, I, I don't even think it's possible to do that with, with so many languages. I, I've never met anybody who can do that. And um, yeah, somebody asked actually on Twitter recently, about if people think that they learn a language in a week, what do I think? Do I think that they're fake? I don't think they're fake. I just think they're probably a bit deluded. Um, and uh, yeah, they just don't understand what it means to speak a language. Um, it's probably the, the thing. I mean, you can speak a language to to different levels and, and that's fine. Um, but we've got to be realistic and, and, and be real with language learning. It's, uh, we don't learn a language in a week. That's just not it's just not what happens. Um, and if we think we are even with similar languages, um, the only person we're, we're fooling is ourselves, really. So um, it's it's just not yeah, it's not something I've ever really observed. Someone learning a language completely in a week is just the amount of vocabulary. First of all, how do you learn all the vocabulary that goes with it? How would you learn even to name everything in this in this office room now where I am? Um, it would take me too long to even just say the, all of the words and the things that you need to know. So, yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, 
could you talk a little bit about your study ritual, your study space? How do you get into the mood? Do you, okay. But, uh, yeah, um, so Kanish, uh, I talked a bit in the beginning, at the beginning about um, about this, a little bit about my study and what it means to me. Um, in terms of getting into the mood, well, you, you just have to sit down and start studying, is, is getting in the mood. Uh, sometimes you don't feel like doing it. Some, and in terms of schedule, I set myself goals of what I want to achieve in a week and, and how often I want to study. Usually it's a minimum of a couple of times a week for a language. Some languages I just practice once a week just so that I don't get them completely. Depends on the language, it depends what I'm doing. Was there ever a period in your life when you did not study? Um, yep, yep, absolutely got bored so got negative yes yes all of that so sometimes I, I don't want to study when my daughter was born I spent I took three years off learning start studying languages and just spent them with my daughter um so so yeah that was three years <laughs> um actually no I tell a, a little bit of a lie um in the sort of the second year of her life I, I I had one evening a week where I went to a British sign language class for a year uh, but otherwise, no, I, I didn't study. I didn't really do much. I just used my languages for work, and but I didn't study. Um, I started studying again, um, I guess. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, for, after three years. And then, um, and yeah, that was because I wanted to focus on my daughter more than anything else. So that was my priority. The uh, Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I get bored. Sometimes um, I, it, it tends to be when, for example, I've got other things on my mind or I, I've got other things I have to do. So, yeah, it happens. I talked about that a lot in the beginning of the, of the video. So if you if you see this when it comes out, the very first part of the video is all about that. Um, learning a language rewires your brain. Indeed, neuroplasticity takes time. Indeed, it does. Hyperpolyglot hyper activist. Uh, yes. Be right that it, it takes time <laughs> you, you you can't force the sort of new pathways neurological pathways in your brain to form um miraculously in in like a day or whatever there are certain brain hacks when you're learning a language similar to another language and if you make memorable stories to know what the differences are and what the similarities are there are things that can help but no, you cannot. Um, you just need time. <laughs> Absolutely. I completely agree. Do you have any uh, tips for beginning in Macedonian? Um, you find it difficult to find good resources. So Matthias, the best, uh, sorry, Matthias, the best resource for Macedonian at the moment on the market is um, uh, Macedonian for beginner beginning i think it's beginning and intermediate i want to say i think it's that's how it's phrased intermediate students uh by christina i'm gonna spell her name wrong now uh, i think she spells it the ch christina kramer you should find it it's a big red book that's the best book and the audio and activities are, can be found online that's the one i used to learn macedonian in the beginning um there are no other books no other books for it. Um, so is it possible to do, if I'm 19 years old, learning German, living in a country as well? Yeah, Manny, you can. I mean, if you're 19, you're living in the country, you can get fairly good. I mean, look, you can get what I say is native level or near native level you can get to in a language, I think, even as an adult. Um, my Spanish teacher at school, she she had a very thick Spanish accent. So you could hear that she was Spanish as soon as she opened her mouth. But in terms of how she manipulated English and her vocabulary, her, her ability in language, there were two or three mistakes that she always made. So one of them that I remember now still to this day was, I'm going to pass the register. She always used to say it in that way, I'm going to pass the register. And instead of, I'm going to take the register, we say in English when you find out who's there in the class and i don't know why that never got corrected or whatever but they were just ingrained mistakes in her english but she could she could run circles around so many monolingual english speakers in terms of everything else she could do that it didn't really matter so 
and she she arrived in the UK, you know, later in life, and, and it just spent a long time. I met somebody else who who said that she felt more more at home in Chinese after arriving in Tai in Taiwan at the age of thirty. She spent over thirty years, so basically from thirty to she was sixty ish at the time, and she said she mainly spoke Chinese for the second half of her life. And if you imagine speak English, she was actually, she was actually from the United States, so she she spoke English mainly for the first half of her life, and then Chinese mostly for the second half of her life. So it is possible to feel more comfortable in another language as an adult speaker, absolutely. Now, nice to see you, Sarmat. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, how Korean? I, I actually started this, 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 um, this video talking about my Korean. Feel free to have a look back and see what I say about it. Um, yeah, it, it's it's going okay generally. <laughs> uh, thank you. You've got a B29 German, let me see, and you'd like to learn more Spanish or French. Do you say better to take my German to C1 or, as, or can I jump into another language? You can definitely try money, you can you can go to other languages and um, and try them. Um, I, I'm not a great believer in thinking, for example, that you have to take every single language to this amazingly high level. Um, in fact, uh, unless you've got a real reason to do it, you've got to also keep that language at that level as well. So it's not, it, when people talk about getting a language to this level or that level or that level, that's not the end of the story. <laughs> you don't get to a C1 or a C2 in something to keep that level. Otherwise, the level goes down again as well it's sort of you know if you imagine it's like it's like having a cup right and in the cup you have a you have a hole and if if you keep putting water in it and there's a hole there the hole still runs out right the water so to keep the level at the same height you keep having to add water to it it's the same with languages you, you can't you can't just get it to a level and then leave it and forget it so depends on what you want to do but i would say do what you want to do with language. If you want to learn a new language and you're, you you just think, okay, the, the German is now at this level and I'm able to maintain it and, and increase it, the level gradually, that's absolutely fine. Do that and then start another one if you want. Um, so improving your pronunciation in English, what to do, um, recording your voice and listening and, and trying to say things that a native speaker does and, and comparing your voice listen to that and get some feedback from some um, speakers of English as well and ask them where the, the sounds are produced. Hi polygots from Iran, hello, that's <laughs> nice to see you, okay. Hi Dino from the UK, uh, and um, oh, so I de crap. So I de crap. <laughs> nice to see you, you know. Um, and her Thai friends always say, I'm waiting you here. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that you get you know, waiting. I'm waiting you here. I'm waiting in Thai. Thai speakers might say that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mexico. Super. Super. That. Uh, okay. So your inspiration. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very, I'm very glad to, 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 you know, to be able to talk to you all, and I hope that you find these. Uh, videos useful uh, to sort of answer your questions and answer the things that I think are important. I hope you like this format of starting with a topic and then moving to the questions and answers. I think for me it gives a little bit more structure to what we're talking about and also um, allows me to give something some very solid advice in the beginning of the video uh, so that people can can watch it later and if they don't want to listen to the question and answer session they can just um, listen to the, 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 the bit at the start. Um, let me see. But yeah, if um, yeah, super. How 
Okay. How how is it going with my Korean? I was exposed to the language during the period of three years, but resisted starting learning it. Now, seven years later, I have the urge to start learning it again. Yeah, Zarko, it's 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 going okay. It takes time. A language like Korean just takes a lot of time. Um, and yeah, I'm conscious that I can say certain things and then other things I'm absolutely no idea how I would say them. Um, it takes time. It really does. Um, but yeah, I think if you feel like going for it, go for it and join us on the Facebook group. We've got um, a little group on Speaking Fluently page um for learning languages learning a new language and we try and encourage each other so feel free to join us um <laughs> thank you very much me i appreciate it yeah <laughs> you can recommend your favorite book or resource to start italian um freak waffle it's difficult actually languages like italian french spanish um, are difficult for me to recommend books for the beginner um, simply because I learned so long ago that I'm not really aware of all of the books that are out there. So when it gets to those languages, I like to say um, check out in a bookshop or online. Uh, you can often see how they look on um, on Amazon to see what they look like inside and, and check them out and see which one you think resonates with you best. That's, that's the best advice I can give. Um, because, I mean, otherwise I would just be giving you names of books. And uh, I think there's so much choice with those books uh, that it wouldn't really be to, to give one over the other without having a real knowledge of them. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot. Um, okay. So it's been so good to see you all. And please do feel free to, um, you know, reach out and uh, come back next week. Uh, Hrvatska te voli. Hvala ti. To je super. I Makedonija voli Hrvatsku. Ja volim Hrvatsku. Ja za meni je to zelo, zelo lepa država. So, um, please, please feel free to uh, drop me um, a message or come back next week and um, feel free to ask more questions and um, yeah follow me on the social media platforms and I interact uh, in different places so there's Twitter Instagram YouTube and uh, and now I'm going to be on uh, yeah this clubhouse which is called at Richard Simcott and uh, feel free to join me and I'm still thinking about TikTok what do you think let me know what you think do you think I should join TikTok what do you think? Tell me your opinions, because I'd, I'd love to know. What would you? What would, What do you think I should do on TikTok? My daughter is still thinking that it's a silly idea and I should stay away from it because I'm too old. But um, what does she know? <laughs> anyway, I will um, speak to you all again soon. Take care. Enjoy your week, and um, I'll see you next weekend. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.